Welcome to another episode of The Jasmine Tea, where we give you piping hot commentary on your favorite Blackity Black shows. I'm your host, Jasmine, writer, speaker, and content creator based in Birmingham, Alabama. And today I'll be recapping Euphoria Season 2, Episode 5. And today I'll be giving you three piping hot moments from Euphoria Season 2, Episode 5. Up first, Rue's mom flushes her pills. So remember, all of Rue's drugs that she has been fronted by Lori are in this suitcase that she's been carrying around for dear life lately. Well, her mom discovers the suitcase after Jules tells her that Rue is back on drugs. So let's break this thing down. Last week, Elliot spilled the beans and told Jules that Rue has relapsed. She's been on drugs for a while now, and we've been doing them together. Jules did we learned today, we learned in yesterday's episode that Jules, we learned yesterday that Jules then took that information to Rue's mom and outed her. So to, <clears throat> so the first thing we see is Rue spazzing out. Like when she finds out, okay. Piping hot moment number one. So Piping hot moment number one, piping hot moment number one, Rue's mom flushes her drugs. So we know that Elliot told Jules that Rue had relapsed and that they've been doing drugs together. Now we find out that Jules took that information straight on over to Rue's house and let her mom know that, hey, your girl has been out here doing the things as usual. So the episode kicks off with Rue searching for her pills. She needs another fix. She's starting to go into relapse and she can't find them. And so she confronts her mom about it, smashes up the whole house y'all like her and Gia get into it because she Rue initially thinks that Gia is the one who told her mom she finds out that's not true but it isn't before she smashes in Gia's door like banging herself against the freaking door until it all she finds out that Gia isn't the one who told um Rue learns that Gia isn't the one who told her mom about the drugs. However, she still continues to go in, to go off on her mom and chase after them and ends up smashing in Gia's door. Like her mom is on one side trying to hold the door closed and Jules is like banging on it, kicking on it. And so the whole thing just caves in. Um, then we see that Jules and Ethan... Then we see that Jules and Elliot are actually in the house this whole time um, because Jules lets... Because Jules lets Rue's... Because Jules lets Rue know that they flushed the pills. Um, so now Rue is, of course, freaking out because Lori told her, if you screw me over, if you don't give me my money, then I'm going to give you away to people who are going to do bad things. So they don't know that. Rue knows that. And so you see her like spazzing out, crying, getting angry all over again. Um, Elliot makes a good point at one point. Elliot makes a statement at one point when he says that he should have just kept his mouth closed and never said anything. I agree with that. Um, to tell Jules, I feel I was kind of on the fence with that. I mean, I kind of agree with him. I feel like he only outed Rue out of spite. Like he said, he wanted to tell Jules about Rue so that he could just be open and honest with her. Um, but he could have just told Jules that he does drugs. He really didn't have to out Rue. That was some intention. That had some intentionality to me. Like he was trying to break them up, you know, separate them so that Jules could just be more open to dating him. Um, but I agree with him. He should have just kept his mouth closed overall and let the cookie crumble as it was going to anyway. Because honestly, I don't see how all these people in Rue's life are completely unaware of the fact that she had relapsed. The girl be walking around looking like a lump of mashed potatoes all the time. Just formless, shapeless, lifeless. Like her eyes are never really open. So how or why they thought that she was sober all this time or even just doing weed anyway. Like weed is going to make your eyes a little pink a little hazy they may drop down a little low but rue was looking like she was barely clinging to life like barely present in any form of reality for so long now so eventually things kind of calm down and rue's mom gets her to agree to go to the hospital rue admits that i really just miss my dad this is so hard it's heartbreaking um and her mom is like okay we can just take you to the hospital you need some help 
But on the way to the hospital, things go all the way left because Rue jumps out of the car into oncoming traffic and runs away. She does not want to go to the psych ward. She does not want to be held in captivity. And homegirl just says, no, I refuse, and hops out of the car and then begins this super long, kind of scary, like, where in the world? This super long, kind of scary, Carmen San Diego esque you know, where in the world is Rue type situation. Okay, so piping hot moment number two is when Rue spills the beans. So remember, she has just dropped, remember she has just jumped out of her mom's car when she's like, so remember, she has jumped out of her mother's car to escape going to the hospital. She stopped by Fez's house, but he was like, hey, I don't want nothing to do with this. He, she stopped by Fez's house, but he was like, hey, I don't want nothing to do with this. After she tried stealing his grandma's medication. Now, y'all know Fez love his grandma. We had a whole episode dedicated to just how big of a boss she was. And we see her today bed stricken, um, bed bound. But Fez is doing what he can to keep her in the best of spirit. But Fez is doing what he can to take care of her. So when he saw Rue going in there attempting to steal her pills, he just kicked her out. He threw her out like a little rag doll. And that's really what she looked like. She's dirty. She's stinky. It's, it's just a mess. Rue gets to Rue gets to Cassie's house where Maddie's there, Lexi's there, Kat is there. You know, they're just kind of kicking it, hanging out or whatever. And she stumbles in. They look, you know. So Rue goes over to Cassie's house where Lexi, Maddie, and Kat are all hanging out. Rue stumbles in and Lexi's mom lets her know that she looks terrible, like terrible, um, and questions her about like, you know, hey, how you doing? How long have you been sober, et cetera, et cetera. Once again, the girl clearly looks out of it. No way, no type, no shape, no form does she look sober. Um, but her mom asks her the questions anyway. Rue excuses herself to go to the restroom um, and hits up their medicine cabinet looking for pills. She doesn't find anything, but she does steal some earrings. And when she comes back down the steps from the restroom, boom, her mom is there. Um, and things just kind of go all the way left again after that. So her mom is once again trying to get her to come home, trying to get her to at least go to the hospital. Rue's not having it. And in the midst of this conversation, right, Cassie opens up and thinks that she's having going to have a helpful moment and tells her and tells Rue to just take things like one day at a time. Like her mom was telling Rue's mom was telling her, you know, you can do anything you put your mind to. Rue's mom was telling her, like, you can do anything you put your mind to. And Cassie followed it up with like, yeah, girl, just take it one day at a time. Uh, Miss Rue did not like that because she then looks up at Cassie, somehow managing to open a good amount of her eyes then, like her eyelid perked up a little bit for this moment of shade, and proceeds to ask her, but hey sis, how long have you been sleeping with Nate Jacobs? And things just continue to erupt from there. So of course, Maddie is like, what? And honestly, I thought Maddie had a pretty peaceful reaction. I was just expecting like instant boom, instant chaos whenever she found out, like a slap a spitting section, just something. I thought Maddie was literally going to lay hands. Um, she tried. She charged after Cassie. We see her chase Cassie up the stairs to her room or whatever. But she did not just initially pull her hair or cuss her out or anything like I was expecting. Um, so, yeah, Rue, Cassie tries to play dumb. Like, what are you talking about? Don't trust her. She's a drug addict. Um, but remember, Maddie has been peeping some vibes anyway for a while now. Like, she's been looking around suspiciously whenever Nate or Cassie does something weird. So I don't think that she was just completely out of the loop to the point where this couldn't even be fathomed in her mind. Like, she knew something was up. She maybe didn't know something was up between these two, but something just went sitting right in Maddie's atmosphere anyway. So she believes Rue, the drug addict, and proceeds to question Cassie about it. Cassie doesn't really give her any answers, runs off upstairs. So I'm sure we'll see the follow up to that um, next week. Rue takes this opportunity when everybody's like focused on the girls going upstairs to dart out of Cassie's house and into the streets once again. <clears throat> 
once she leaves, once she leaves Cassie and Liz's house, um, she stops by Fez's house and tries to steal some of his grandma's pills, y'all. Like Fez, Fez tells her, I don't have anything on stop. The house is dry now ever since, you know, they got raided. Rue wasn't having it. She went tiptoeing in his grandma's room. And when he saw her doing that, he completely kicked her out, which I feel like was the right decision. Rue was looking like a pitiful little rag doll. Um, because she's just, I mean, she's just so out of it. Like she's going through withdrawal. It's not looking good for her. So once she gets kicked out of, um, Fez's house, she's walking down the street and just happens to come across some cops and, you know, she's looking raggedy or whatever, ends up vomiting in front of the cops. And from then a foot chase ensues. Now, how in the world does this woman in withdrawal have so much strength? Rue is like, hopping over fences she's hopping over gates she's scaling walls she's walking across rooftops all while like aching over in pain as if her i don't know what's here in your abdomen okay i don't know all the um anatomical logistics there around here but she's clearly in pain she's clearly like sweaty stinky just haggard looking but still hopping over everything like spider-man because she gives these cops a run for their money she eludes the cops eventually she runs through swimming pools backyards people's houses and makes a getaway Okay, and our third piping hot moment is when Rue goes to meet Lori and lets her know that... Okay, so our third piping hot moment is when Rue goes to meet Lori and tries to pay off a bit of her debt. So after getting chased by the cops, Rue goes and hides in this random couple's house in order to escape and get off the streets. Um, and while she's in there, she steals some of their jewelry. She makes friends with their dog. Um, and then she almost gets caught because they come back while she's still hiding under the bed in some magical type of way. Even though the husband like lifts up the sheets and sees her, she still darts out the house and makes her way over to see Lori. Um, Lori, while she does seem rather sympathetic, but it's like a creepy sympathetic. It's like an emotionalist sympathetic, like your words are saying one thing, but your whole vibe is giving another. Um, but Lori seems sympathetic, like, oh, you know, I used to be going through withdrawal symptoms too. Oh, you poor girl or whatever. Um, and Rue is like, once again, as we know, clinging to the bare schemes of life. Uh, Lori lets her know that I will not be accepting this little haggard jewelry that you bought over here. You owe me money, cash money, and you don't look like you're going to be able to pay it back. Um, Rue then tells her like, okay, um, I, she has to go to the bathroom where she continues to work. Rue tells her like, okay, or whatever. Yeah, I'll work on that. Um, but she ends up in the bathroom, in the bathtub. So Rue tells her, yeah, okay, I hear you. I can understand that. Um, but Rue ends up in the bathtub needing some TLC for Miss Lori, who runs her a bath and ends up injecting her with morphine. She doesn't have any pills either. I don't know what's going on with the pill population. I guess the demand is high tonight for this episode. Um, but she injects Rue with some morphine and we see Rue wake up, I'm guessing some hours later because everybody else in the house is asleep. Um, but every all of the doors are locked, like the front door, a second door she went to a window was locked and she ends up having to escape once again with this superhuman super spidey manny strength she escapes out of Lori's bathroom window right before her husband catches her um, and jumps back out into the streets continuing this like crazy foot chase um and just yeah that's the last time we see her walking down the street at night the episode ends flashing back to Rue's mom house. Rue's mom is sitting at the table, of course, waiting for Rue to come in. And the door opens and she calls out to see if it's Rue, but we don't know who it is. I'm thinking it's Rue because who else walks into your house unannounced with a key? Um, maybe they had a key, maybe not. I don't know, but the door was probably unlocked. But I'm guessing it's Rue because who else just walks up in your house unannounced like that? But... Maybe not. If they've put out a search notice or whatever, it could be a cop or a friend or anything. But that is where we left Rue this episode. It was all about Rue. We didn't get to see Nate. Um, we saw just that one scene of like Maddie and Cassie and Kat. This was all about Rue. At one point, I thought she was going to go to Ali's house. But remember, they had that ugly falling out last time. So it makes sense that she did it. He probably wouldn't want to see her no way. Um, I wouldn't blame him. 
But yeah, let me know your predictions. A lot of people were talking on the internet over the past week about how they thought Rue is probably already dead or she has been dead since the season began and she's just narrating the story as it happened. What do you think about that? Also, what do you think about Maddie's reaction to finding out that Cassie and Nate have been sleeping together? Did it give you everything you were hoping for? Um, you know, it left me a little disappointed. Did it give you everything that you were hoping it would be? Um, and that is going to wrap up this episode of The Jasmine Tea. Make sure you're following me on social media at The Jasmine Tea, like the letter Tom. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel on YouTube and like it so that you can know when the videos are up and available for your listening and viewing pleasure. You can catch this podcast audio. You can listen to the audio version of this podcast wherever podcasts are found. Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all of those suckers are available. If you have any questions, comments, or observations, please leave them in the comments below and I will see you next week.